Let's take a closer look at the upcoming driver cooling technology for F1. The discussion started after the Qatar race in 2023, where all drivers struggled to cope with the high temperatures during the race. Some gave up, vomited in their helmets or fainted. The FIA decided to look for a solution, because Qatar is not the only race with high ambient temperatures. And if they would find a good way to cool the drivers, they would also have more freedom to plan the F1 calendar, as they now have to consider the time of the year and the time of the day. So the FIA now decided to introduce driver cooling kits for hot races from 2025. The problem is just, it's already mid-November and the cooling system needs to be integrated within the next weeks. And this situation reminds me on the sudden halo introduction at the end of the 2017 season. So, same situation now, the cars are pretty much done for next year. And Hamilton is against it. Monocoques are typically defined before the summer shutdown. So, how can you cool the driver better in an open race car? First, they allow teams to have an additional air scoop on the nose to direct ambient air to the driver. But the driver is sitting there in his overall and fire protective underwear and the flow of hot ambient air over the surface doesn't really help much. Another cooling system every driver has at the moment is the helmet cooling. So in and outlets around the helmet which ensure a certain cooling flow with ambient air. Large cooling tubes like in closed cockpit racing are not possible because the helmet is exposed in an F1 car. A better solution to cool the driver would be to concentrate on the core, so the torso. So you could blow air through the overall, but certain areas are blocked because of the tight seat belts. Ambient air at hot races is hotter than body temperature, so that doesn't really help as well. To get cooler air there are two ways, either you use ice or an air conditioning system. Like we said, the monocoques are already finished for next year and nobody wants to cut holes inside them now. So it is clear that the system must be packaged within the cockpit. Dry ice is used to cool the car in the pit and before the start, but it is sitting at maximum minus 78 degrees Celsius, so first of all it could disturb or even surprise the driver when coming into contact. You would need a lot of dry ice for a two hour race and since it evaporates with steam, there would be clouds coming out of the cockpit. In lower categories, one of the most frequent problems with ice cooling is that it's not enough. And then we wouldn't have an improvement to today. So the FIA ruled it out. The other option is the use of an air conditioning system. So a compressor which is driven by the engine or electrically, a condenser which would have to be integrated into the cooling system of the car and an evaporator which is cooling the cockpit's air. But keep in mind it's an open cockpit. So that would be a big job to integrate such a system and in the end there would be cool air flowing over the driver's overall or maybe through it. But the other thing about air cooling is the low thermal capacity of air compared to water. So a water cooled system would be a lot better. Rumors came up that the FIA is now concentrating on water cooled clothes for drivers. And we can see that the FIA just homologated a cooling shirt of the company Chillout. News came up that a driver was testing the system in Mexico, but the FIA didn't reveal who it was. On Chillout's homepage, we see a picture of Leclerc wearing their cooling shirt, so that might be the answer. So how does this Chillout system work? It's basically a standard fireproof underwear shirt with small water hoses soon in. It looks like a floor heating system in a house with four tubes running in one direction, concentrating on five areas at front and rear. Chillout claims to use up to 160 feet of tubes per shirt, so if we assume an internal diameter of 5 mm, we get around 1 liter water volume per shirt. This shirt is then connected to two thicker water tubes for in and return flow to the right hand side. These two tubes then connect to the cooler unit, which is effectively an air conditioning system, just a very small one. The compact box includes a water reservoir, water pump, a small rotary AC compressor, chiller to cool down the water and a condenser to reject heat. The coolant is actually not just water, there is a bit of glycol inside to avoid freezing of the system should it be unused in the garage or truck overnight. So how would this work for the driver in reality? First he needs to prepare the system. 
He would wear the shirt with tubes, connect them to the box and run the water pump to pump coolant through the shirt. The system bleeds itself, you just need to make sure to top up the reservoir which holds between 0.3 and 0.4 liters of coolant. Remember that the shirt will need up to 1 liter. But Chillout also offers connectors which keep the water in the shirt, so bleeding would be faster. The AC system runs on 12 volts and pulls up to 25 amps, which means 300 watt. In case of a leak, the system can run on a short circuit, so only a part of the shirt's coolant would leak and the system would run further, but not overheat. Their Quantum Pro system is fully controllable, but also big and heavy, and it's designed for endurance racing. The much smaller and simpler Ultra Light Cypher Pro, which is designed for formula cars, needs to be set up beforehand externally and has three cooling levels with a cooling of up to 20 Kelvin. To work properly, the internal condenser needs to get fresh air. Chillout offers a standard duct here, which is likely to be redesigned by F1 teams to fit their package. The guess is that AC boxes would be integrated in the right hand side of the cockpit, as here are the connectors of the shirt. Teams could be allowed to integrate an air intake for the AC system. A good location for it would be the headrest with its high pressure area. The warm air leaving the AC box would likely be channeled out of the cockpit as well, which would mean teams would be allowed to have a cockpit outlet. And this is where it's getting interesting. First of all, Chillout says that if you cool the torso of a driver, you don't need other cooling. So teams could remove helmet cooling for an aerodynamic benefit. And if F1 engineers hear that they can have an additional inlet and outlet for driver cooling, their brains start thinking what else they could do with that. The system will have a weight of up to 5 kg and the minimum weight of the cars will be adapted to that. So it's a topic which is a new step for F1, this could be a role model for other race series and it's definitely an interesting topic which is worth watching. Further potential of the system is that a bigger AC unit where you can plug in multiple shirts could be in every box and all team members could wear such a cooling shirt and plug in if they want to. So I hope you liked this little insight and if you want to work in F1 as well, check out my online courses with the links below which prepare you for a career in F1 and give you invaluable insights. See you at the next video.